Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. John Ip, LMC Medical Director, giving the update on IT and information governance. Remote access. Over 1,000 additional users have been rolled out since the start of the outbreak, enabling working from home by GPs and practice staff. Applications are still being taken by the IT team, and they can be emailed at the address noted below. IT are aware of the issue of being unable to print from an external source to the practice and are currently working with EMIS and NSS to resolve this. Attend Anywhere has now been rolled out to all practices with each practice getting two webcams with dual screen setup. IT are currently planning to roll out more webcams to practices so that GPs and practice staff will be able to use the technology for consulting. NHS Mail is still in line to be migrated to the new nhs.scot email address. Timescale is September and the IT team are setting up to have everyone ready to migrate by the summer. All users will have the email format as forename.surname at nhs.scot and anyone with a name already used will have a number after the surname. Windows 10 migrations were supposed to be happening now and throughout the year. We are currently in discussions with IT about restarting this, and this will also involve upgrading of PCs, hard drives, and dual screens in consulting rooms. Logistically, it will be challenging, especially with the need to maintain safe social distancing for practice and IT staff. Another product that has been quickly rolled out is Microsoft Teams. IT are in the process of producing further guidance and advice on its use in practices. Those of you who have been involved in NHS meetings may already have been using this. Microsoft Teams and the migration to NHS.scot is part of a wider move to Office 365. And over the course of this year, we will be seeing the functionality of 365 being deployed into practices. Dotman licenses have been greatly increased across the patch. GMS IT has funded 500 additional licenses mainly to support remote working in GP practices. A further 500 have been funded by HSCPs for pharmacotherapy staff working remotely. The IT help desk is functioning normally as usual and the numbers of calls from practices are relatively stable. Our IT team led by David Wilson has done an amazing job over the past two months since the start of the outbreak. He and the team have been rolling out many of the projects as well as supporting practices on a daily basis. Some other projects that's worth mentioning. The clinical portal GP record view was rolled out at the end of March. We had been working with IT on this for a while and we were going to roll it out later in the year, but with the COVID escalation in mid-March and then with the lockdown and potential peak in cases, the functionality was completed quickly, tested, and comms sent out to all practices. This gives portal users a list of the patient's current problems, past medical history, allergies, as well as acute medications in the last three months and repeat medications issued in the last 18 months. Users have to give a reason for viewing the record, such as patient consent, an emergency, or they can free text the reason. The ability for a buddy practice to be able to connect directly to the other practices server is now enabled. This function hopefully will be rarely used. However, it can be enabled at short notice, but it does require buddying practices to set up the right login names and passwords for their new buddy users. I want to spend a little bit of time on the next two things, which are information sharing and the shielding searches. First is the information sharing agreement. This was originally emailed out to all practices on the 12th of March, but I suspect from the lack of returns from practices that this was probably missed. 13th of March was when we went into level one of the escalation plan. The board has reissued the email and it would be good if GPs and practice managers can take some time to go over the documents. The joint controller and information sharing agreement is nationally agreed between SGPC and the Scottish Government and sets out the basis of data sharing and also joint controllership. And this is especially important with extended MTT working and practices. 
It is also required for GDPR, and I hope that it gives practices confidence that they have a good framework for sharing. Also important for practices is the GP Data Protection Officer Service. This was agreed as part of the 2018 GP contract that practices will receive without charge access to a data protection officer for advice about GDPR, information governance, data sharing, and also IT training. The board has reissued these documents and it is important that you have a look through them and sign up to them. The shielding searches and the extracts. The shielding process has not been a straightforward exercise, especially with the numerous changes in rules. The board's public health and IT team commissioned a company to adapt an escrow search function for shielding patients and potential shielding patients. This was to avoid practices from having to come up with their own practice searches. The escrow search does allow an extract of shielded patient and there is interest in this use of data in research. Practices should have received information about this and can opt out of data sharing if they so choose. Lastly, I want to remind you that we are producing a weekly communication giving you news of what is happening at board and national level as well as what the LMC is doing. There are links to many of the key documents that have come out that uh, week, and I hope that you are finding it useful. Please go to our website and click on the COVID-19 updates link. Uh, and thank you very much for listening. Please contact the LMC if you have any further questions.